Trader's Corner is brought to you by IG. Welcome back. You're watching Trader's Corner. And as always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Trader's Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Juliette. Garth, um, you'd think that the S&P 500 at a new all-time high would be really, really exciting. But it, it comes at the same time that you've got all these bond yields touching record lows. And it's got a lot of people saying, this shouldn't be happening. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it is. It's very strange to see bond yields so low and bonds rising, and yet also the equity market rising as much as it is. There's a, quite a dislocation there. Mm. But nevertheless, it is what it is. Um, when it comes to the charts, we've kind of got to trade what we see. And, and the S&P 500 has made a new high last night, a new all-time high. And it's broken out through some technical resistance, which suggests it might probably go a little bit higher still before this run uh, you know, consolidates. I mean, you've got a chart up there. So do you think there is more to be had from this rally? Potentially. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 here. So it goes back over the last uh, three years, really, or two years, actually. Um, and you, so you can see every, every candlestick pattern here represents one week worth of trade. And what's notable here is that, that that blue line there, that horizontal line, which I've drawn in through 2100, is quite a significant level. I mean, the actual high on the S&P 500 was 2134 previously. Yes. But if you look on a sort of a 52-week basis, so going back over the last year, that 2100 area really has been quite a significant resistance area with a little bit of noise above it here and there. But by and large, the market's never closed a week above 2100 in the last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now we have. Now we're, we're pushing out through there. So, you know, my sense is that this probably sparks a bit of short covering and probably does take this market a little bit higher. But am I getting excited and super bullish about the fact that this market's going to continue to go roaring a lot higher? No. Um, if anything, I think I'd probably be a seller into, into an overshoot here. And what about the local market? Because we've followed suit, as you might expect us to. Um, and I suppose 45,000 is the key level that we need to watch. Yeah, we, we haven't really followed suit in the sense that, remember, the rand is so strong against the pound. So because we've got uh, stocks in our index like SAB and British American Tobacco and Billiton and so on, those uh, have actually kind of held the market back in the in, in, in the sense on an on an index level. Okay. So I mean we're not an, we're not chasing records but no. but we have picked up a, along with the rest of um, world markets. Yeah, that's right. We've picked up a bit in the last few days. What's what's interesting to note here on the top 40 graph is this 45,000 level. And I know I've spoken about this on the show previously that that is quite a significant support level. Um, in the last three weeks or so, we've pierced below that 45,000 support twice, um, first on the, on the Brexit vote, mm -hmm. and then again more recently in the beginning of July. But the market has picked up a bit. I see it's up a little bit more again today. Um, and so for the, for the most part, I guess we've got to say that this 45,000 lateral support level is holding. And, uh, and, and, and whilst that is the case, it looks as if we've got a little bit of a bounce on our hands at the moment. What I want to do, though, just to um, introduce what, what I've done, because I've gone long of a top 40 uh, yes. CFD uh, against our option structure. And this is a payoff quickly of our option structure that we've got, which runs out to the September futures closeout. So it goes out to the middle of September. And uh, regular viewers will have seen this payoff diagram before. Those that haven't, you can go back and look on the website, either on traderscorner.ca.za or on the Business Day TV website. And you can go and have a look at how we constructed this put spread option structure. Bottom line, though, is that these uh, numbers along the bottom axis here are the levels on the top 40 index. And on the left-hand side here, we've got profit and loss. Now, the structure that we've put, up, put on, uh, basically below 45,000, it starts to make money. Mm -hmm. Above 45,000, we lose nothing. We, we pay away a premium of 891 Rand, and that's it. Um, the nice thing about this, though, if we go back to our top 40 chart here, is that keep in mind what I said, that from the 45,000 level and downwards, we would make money on that option structure. That, therefore, allows us to go and buy against the structure, yes. knowing that we've got a hedge in place on the downside, which is quite a nice benefit to have. So... The fact that the market's now up above 45,000 again is, is quite encouraging. And I saw this as an opportunity uh, late last week to go long of the top 40 CFD at IG Markets, uh, basically on the basis that we've got that option structure sitting in the background hedging us out so we can go along. Yeah, I mean, because that's always the plan for an option structure is that it, give you, it gives you options and, um, and you don't have to go naked short, you don't have to go, well, I suppose now maybe this is a bit of a naked long of the market, but um, yeah. you know that if the market turns, 
that will then start working. Well, that's it. So the, the option structure basically hedges us against downside risk. So what I've done is I've gone long over the SA40 cash CFD at IG Markets. Now, what's really nice about what IG offers is that they offer a two rand per point CFD, which mimics the cash market. Yeah. So last week, you'll see, this is now a one-hour chart of the, of the uh, IG CFD. It's a 24-hour contract, so it trades throughout the night, throughout the day. Um, but what was notable here is that we had this double bottom that formed last week, and that level was at about 44,400 on the cash index. And once it bounced up off that, I mean, you could almost say it's even a triple bottom there, but I know some of this trade happened in, in after hours time, yeah. basically while we were sleeping, which I always am a bit cautious to, to include that. But nevertheless, it's on the, on the chart here. Yeah. Uh, we, we had that double bottom pattern, and then we saw the market breaking above this downward trend. So I took that as a cue to go long based on the fact that we had the double bottom, we've broken the downtrend, and I know I've got an option structure sitting in the background, which allows me, to, which will hedge me out anyway, yeah. if the market falls. So I've gone long two contracts of this IG top 40 CFD, and keep in mind, this is the two rand per point CFD we're talking about here, so it's what they call a micro contract. I mean, because it's normally 10 rand per point. Yeah, typical, uh, typically a future, a top 40 future gives you 10 rand per point exposure, which is a big position, even if you take one contract. Yeah. Whereas here, this allows you to take a much smaller position because it's only two rand per point. It's a, it's a lot smaller in terms of exposure. And it's a great product if you're a beginner wanting to start learning to trade the market and learning to trade the top 40. This is a really great product to use. Yeah. So I've gone along two of these things. Uh, because it's two rand per point and I've done two of them, it means I'm effectively exposed to four rand per point on the long side. And I've gone along at 44,820. I did this uh, late last week. And my stop loss would be 44,400, basically below the bottom of that double bottom. And we'll see how far I can run it up. We've got quite a nice upward trend at developing here at the moment. If that trend starts to break, then perhaps I'll exit that. But uh, it's not a big position. The risk is only 1,500 Rand if it does get stopped out. Oh, for your, of your capital, that's probably, what, about 1% or thereabouts? Yeah, it's less than 1%. It's about close to half a percent, okay. just over half a percent. And you're clearly in the money already? Yes, we're nicely in the money. I mean, we're already about a thousand points in the money on that, uh, on, on that CFD, which is nice. So that makes, gives us about a 4,000 Rand mark-to-market -market profit on that. Mm. We'll, t we'll take it. Um, we Garth, uh, that's not the only trade, though, that you've enacted for the portfolio. You've also gone along of Mr. Price. Why is this a, a stock um, that's tempted you in? Yes, I've gone along of Mr. Price. It's actually been a very strong performer this year for the year to date. I know it's come off its highs from early last year, and it's not nowhere near its all-time highs. But if you just look at it for the year to date, it's actually been trending higher. You can see this graph that goes back to February, so you can see a consistent pattern of higher lows and higher highs here. And it's probably the strongest stock in the retail, or one of the strongest stocks in the retail sector. Now, it's been consolidating over the last month or so in this sort of sideways band. If I draw this in, you can actually almost make a case for a bit of an um, ascending triangle mm -hmm. pattern to be forming there. The bottom line is that we've got these higher lows forming. And then we've got these flat tops, which are at about 212 Rand, where there's that overhead resistance over there. Now, the, the higher lows imply that the buyers are active at those lower levels. So each time the price pushes up to 212, it seems to be getting sold down again, but the buyers step in at a higher price each time. And then it rallies back to 212 and falls back, but doesn't fall as low as the previous time. So what that is telling you, if you think about the dynamic between buyers and sellers, mm -hmm. is that the buyers are actually showing it to be a, a, a slightly stronger force here. And if that is the case, then the likelihood is that eventually when that pattern resolves, it's gonna resolve itself to the upside because we know the buyers are the strongest force. So I'm going into a trade here on the expectation that it's going to break out. And, and, and if I drill down into a one hour chart now, okay. so that was a daily graph that we were looking at. Now we look at a one hour graph. Uh, this one hour graph goes back to the 23rd of June and every candlestick pattern here represents one hour's worth of trade. Here you can see quite clearly that flat overhead resistance, mm. which is at about 212 Rand. And now most recently, when I say most recently, over the last three days or so, you can see there's actually a bull flag pattern that has been forming over there. And this morning now, that stock finally is beginning to break out through the bull flag top, and it's breaking out through the top of this lateral resistance at 212 Rand. So that for me is a bullish break, and it's probably going to result in further buying and further follow through upside, I believe. So I've gone long uh, on that basis. I've gone long at 211 Rand with a stop loss at 205. 
Hmm. Well, so, I mean, take us through the greater the mechanics of that because it's not always the case that you preempt a brake house because that can be quite that can be dangerous. Yeah. Um, you, you know, especially if if it fails and it doesn't manage to to do what you expect it to. Mm. But you obviously feel fairly confident in this. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm not I'm not preempting the breakout on this occasion because I've, it's actually broken through the top of that bull flag pattern over there th this morning. So okay. So Sorry, I'm, I was I'm, thinking I'm of 212 rand. Yeah. Okay. So I'm buying it on the break. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm buying it on the break of the flag, I suppose. I'm not buying it on the break of the bigger resistance level. So, yes, you're right. I'm, re I'm, I'm preempting the break of the bigger, the bigger resistance, I suppose. But the fact that the flag pattern is broken to the upside gives me confidence to go in. And, and that stop loss is at 212 Rand, which basically implies that it would need to go below yesterday's low, mm -hmm. below the bottom of that uh, flag structure. Which looks unlikely at this point. Mm. So, guys, I mean, as you do, sketch it out for us uh, in, in a little bit uh, greater detail. All right. So we've gone long at 211 rand per share. The stop loss is 205. That means that my risk per share is six rand. In other words, if the stop loss gets hit, the, the, I'm losing six rand per share. The amount of risk that I'm willing to assume on this trade is 2,720 rand. That is one percent of our capital. We've got about 272,000 Rand in the account at the moment, so 1% of that is 2,720 Rand. Uh, I'm taking that capital risk, the 2,720, and then I divide it by the risk per share of 6 Rand, and that gives me a number of 453 shares that I could eff effectively buy. So rounding it off, I've done 450 CFDs for the portfolio. I'm looking for a target here of 225 Rand. Okay. That would be a projection up from that flag structure up. Uh, and then my risk to reward ratio on this trade then is one to two point three. Garth, do you think you'll have to be fairly patient with this? Because, you know, when you do get a share that that approaches a a, a level of fairly um, determined overhead resistance and doesn't manage to break through it, and it's at two hundred twelve rand. I mean, do you think that's either going to be a, a case where it might break through it and then get to your target quite quickly? Uh, because people are going to start chasing the stock, yeah. or would you be patient with this one? Look, the best trades work out very, very quickly. So in an ideal world, I think this breakout gets followed by a number of other participants in the market, and that pushes the price higher, and it should get to our target quite quickly. If that doesn't happen, then I need to say to myself, well, maybe I'm misreading the chart, and, uh, and, and there's not enough other market participants seeing it the same way that I am to chase that break higher. So I'll need to make an assessment. I mean, if, if needs be, I'll be patient, but not, not excessively so. Uh, the best trades generally work straight off the bat, and you actually manage to get your profit in the bank fairly quickly. Yeah, And then just risking 1% of um, the account, is it because you've now got a couple of trades on the go, don't want to spread yourself too thin. Yeah, it's basically we've got that long top 40 position now, and then we've got this one, uh, which is which is 1% of risk. We do have the option structure giving us downside participation, though. I guess I just took a small position here because I've been chipping away making singles uh, <laughs> this this year. And in, in light of that, we need to uh, you know build up the capital a little bit more. Maybe then I'll get a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Oh. Good God, we need a six or a four at this stage <laughs> of the game. Also, what does the portfolio look like? Uh, it's looking like this. We actually had a nice week. So it's up nine, nine and a bit percent for the year to date. Uh, we've got 273,000 Rand in the portfolio. You can see all the open positions there. So those are our, the various legs of our put spread option structure. And then that uh, contract, the two contracts long on the IG SA40 cash. And then Mr. Price where we long at 211 Rand. Mm. So... All looking good at this stage. Yeah, so ticking higher. And guys, to end off with, you've got a couple of courses next week. Or, yes, or the end time. of next week. So we are on the 21st of July, that's a Thursday evening, I'm doing an Understanding CFDs course. And then on the 23rd of July, I've got, that's a Saturday full day course, I've got a high probability trading course. So anyone that would like to attend either of these courses, please email me on garth at traderscorner.ca.za and I'll send you all the info. Great. Garth, thanks as always for joining us. Uh, garth McKenzie is, of course, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Trader's Corner is brought to you by IG.